Hey guys, this is God of Politics. I'm going to be a brand new video, but before we get started with this video, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter that is linked down in the description and up on my channel page right over here. And join the Discord as well, that is also linked down in the description, so you should go check that out. Join the Discord and... Yeah, so we're going to be getting started with this video today. This video today is going to be the updated governor, my updated governor election predictions for the 2020 elections. This is rather not a prediction video, but more a state of the race, how these races are going at this point. If the election were held today, how would they go? I'm still going to call it a prediction. It's predicting how they would go today, and I'm just going to be doing these month by month. I've been starting to do these earlier in the month, so by November... You know, I'll have all of my races on my house, elections, Senate elections, presidential elections, and governor elections just before the election starts. That's why I'm starting to do these earlier in the month here. But we're just going to be going through each of these states and seeing why I think they are going to go a certain way at this point and how that will equate to November and how much influence the Republicans and Democrats can both have. So first, we'll start off with the state of New Hampshire here. I do believe New Hampshire is going to be a likely Republican state here. You have Chris Sununu here. He's pretty popular here. Uh, I would almost put this in the safe Republican column, but it is a closer state at the presidential level, and Dan Feltz is the majority leader of the New Hampshire State Senate, so that can make it a little bit closer, but it is still going to be a likely margin for the Republicans from the state of New Hampshire. From the state of Vermont is the sister state of uh, New Hampshire. It's also going to be by a likely margin for the Republican Party. You have the incumbent Phil Scott here. He's a pretty popular governor as well. He has a 60% approval rating, and he is in one of the bluest states in the country, the state of Vermont. It's also the state that elected Senator Bernie Sanders, which is kind of weird if you think about it. They elect Bernie Sanders as well as Patrick Leahy, as well as Phil Scott, the Republican governor. He is kind of a what some people call a rhino because he is a Republican governor in a very blue state. But the Democrats, I would put this again, I would put this in the safe margin, but the Democrats do have a good candidate. They have the Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman running, a Democrat. He is running against him, which can make it a little bit closer, but Phil Scott is a lot more popular, so I do believe that this will push it into the likely margin rather than the safe margin. But Phil Scott, I do believe, would win by quite a comfortable margin regardless. The next seat is going to be Delaware, Joe Biden's home state. John Carney is a pretty popular incumbent governor here. He's not too popular, but again, it's the state of Delaware, so he'll be able to comfortably win. It's a safe safe state for the Democrats at both the presidential level and the state level. You've got the state legislator here in the state Senate that's actually going to be quite interesting from the state of Delaware. That's going to be an interesting result to see, but uh, as for now, we just have the uh, governor elections here, so I'm going to be putting that in the safe Democratic column here. The next state is going to be the state of West Virginia. I had this at a safe margin, a uh, likely margin last time. Now I have it at a safe margin here. And I think I pointed out in the last video is that Republicans haven't actually elected, or West Virginia hasn't elected a Republican governor in the state of West Virginia since 1996. You know, you had Joe Manchin here as the governor, and you had Jim Justice, who was elected as a Democratic governor in 2016, who switched to the Republican Party. And while he's not quite popular here, again, it's West Virginia. Democrats aren't going to do too well. They don't have that great of a candidate, and so I do believe that it will be a safe margin. Um, it will be a safe margin, but again, he's not quite that popular governor, so it will probably only be around 10 to 11 points, maybe 11 to 12 points. We'll see about that. The next seat is going to be the state of Indiana. Indiana will also be a safe margin, I do think, that. Uh, you have Eric Holcomb here. He's not too popular. There's only at around a 51% approval rating, but it is a state that's trended heavily red at all levels of government. And Woody Myers, the Democratic challenger, is not the best candidate for this seat, and so I do believe that Eric Holcomb is going to win by a safe margin. The next one is the state of Missouri. We've seen a little bit of polling that showed double digits lead for Mike Parson here. He took over as governor in 2018 after the scandal for the former governor who resigned after being elected in 2016. So Mike Parson's actually never been elected, but it is a state of Missouri that, like Indiana, has trended heavily to the Republican column. And you do have the Democratic challenger, Nicole Galloway, who is the state auditor, the only elected Democrat in the state of Missouri, is now running for governor, which could be a good thing, but not too great of a candidate in terms of beating him, and it is the state of Missouri, so I do believe that it will be by a safe margin. The next state going in here, North Carolina. I do believe North Carolina will be a lean Democratic state. You have Rory Cooper here. He's become a lot more popular because of this crisis. His approvals really shot up. I think he has like around 60% approval rating now, which is really good in a state that Donald Trump won by three and a half percentage points. This is a state that's going to become more, more competitive at the presidential level, 
And at the governor level, I do believe that Roy Cooper is going to win by a lean margin, if not a likely margin. At this point, I put about around four to five points here. But again, this was the closest race in 2016 against Pat McCrory. Roy Cooper actually beat the incumbent Pat McCrory, which to me shows a lot more about the weaknesses of Hillary Clinton than the strengths of Donald Trump. But that's for another video in terms of the presidential level. But as for the governor election, I do believe that Roy Cooper being able to beat a Republican, child, a Republican incumbent in 2016 is going to win the election in terms of this election, and he'll win by around four to five points at this point. But the reason I'm not putting in a, you know, a safe margin is because of the fact the Republicans do have a good governor uh, challenger. They do have the lieutenant governor, Dan Forrest, here, which can make this state closer. But like in Vermont, you have a popular incumbent. I don't think it'll make too much of a difference. I think Roy Cooper will win by a lean margin. The next state down here is Utah. I do believe Utah will be by a safe margin. You have Gary Herbert here who said he wouldn't run for a third term. Uh, even though he could. So now you have a matchup between Christopher Peterson and Spencer Cox, who is the lieutenant governor. Spencer Cox, he's probably going to be the nominee. And then, you know, it's Utah. It'll be by a safe margin, easily safe state. The next state is the state of North Dakota here. North Dakota will be a safe Republican state. It's one of the most Republican states in the country. Donald Trump won it by 35 points. And Doug Burgum will probably win by a very, very substantial margin. The next day here is the state of Washington. You have Jay Inslee here who is eligible to run for a third term, and he is running for a third term. He has gotten a lot more name recognition for running for president, and with all this crisis, he's been widely praised for it. And so he's gotten a lot more popular, and he'll win by a pretty substantial margin in the state that goes by Democrats by a pretty substantial margin anyway. So he will win by a safe margin. And then the final state here, pretty much the only very competitive race that we don't really know who's going to win is the state of Montana. Montana, I'm going to put at tilt R for now, similar to what I, I think it's the same as what I put it in the last governor elections predictions video. This is probably going to be the closest race of the entire governor's race. You have the lieutenant governor, governor Mike Cooney here, who is running for the seat here. Uh, you also do have another Democratic challenger in this state, a person who has roots to the state of Montana in terms of her family. Um, whether she can win is a whole nother question against against the lieutenant governor Mike Cooney. I do believe that whoever does win will make it a very close election race, especially Mike Cooney. Mike Cooney, I think, will make it a lot closer just due to the fact he has the Bullock endorsement. Bullock endorsement. He is the lieutenant governor. As for the Republican side, the Republicans do have most likely Tim Fox, who's the attorney general, running for this state. Um, you know, I have Steve Bullock running for the Senate. You have a state. Montana is a very weird state. They have elected Democratic governors before. They haven't actually elected a Republican governor since the year of 2000. And so I do believe that this state is going to be very close in terms of the presidential level. But as of now, I put it in the tilt Republican column just because, again, it is a very red state. It is Montana. I do believe they will narrowly win. So, yeah, this is the overall map. After this, the Republicans will get a net gain of one. Formerly 26 to 24 in the favor of the Republicans, now 27 to 23 in favor of the Republicans. Um, not too many competitive races this year, but I'll just make a video of it anyway each month. I'll just be continuing to do that. So, yeah, thank you all for watching this video. Please like and subscribe as always. Follow me on Twitter that is linked down in the description and on my channel page. And join the Discord that is linked down in the description. But as always, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys later.